Looking for magic cards? At flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 while supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a Boros Fether Aggro deck that I was able to play in the early access streamer event for War of the Spark, courtesy of Wizards of the Coast that invited me to participate, and where we got access to these god accounts with all the cards unlocked and a whole bunch of gems to spend on all cosmetics. And uh, that's what we'll see here, Boros Feather, a nice aggro deck featuring Feather, the Redeemed, as one of the build around cards, a 3 mana, 3 4 flying angel, legendary creature that says, whenever we cast an instant or sorcery spell that targets a creature we control, exile that card instead of putting it into the graveyard as it resolves, and if we do, return that card to our hand at the beginning of the next end step. So our deck has a whole bunch of creatures that benefit from being targeted by pump spells. And with Feather in play, we get to recycle these pump spells over and over again, while of course still getting the effect from those pump spells. So taking a look at our deck list, at 1 mana we basically have all these targeted pump spells. We've got 4 copies of Defiant Strike, 1 mana to give plus 1 plus 0 until end of turn, and also draws a card, so we can get a ton of card advantage with Feather in play. We have 2 copies of Sheltering Light to make a creature indestructible until end of turn, also lets us scry 1 for some more card selection. We've got 4 copies of Reckless Rage, which is actually pretty good in this deck. 1 mana for an instant, deals 4 damage to target creature you don't control, and 2 damage to target creature you do control. There do need to be 2 different targets for Reckless Rage to be cast, so if your opponent doesn't control any creatures you can cast it, if you don't control any creatures you can cast it. But under the right circumstances we have a lot of creatures that we can safely target and deal 2 damage to with Reckless Rage, and then this turns into a repeatable removal spell as soon as we have a Feather in play. So it's uh, pretty powerful against creature decks. Then we also have the full 4 copies of Samwich's Sprint, 1 mana for an instant, giving plus 2 plus 1, and giving the creature haste until end of turn, and also scry 1. And then the full 4 copies of Integrity Intervention, Integrity giving plus 2 plus 2 until end of turn for 1 mana, and Intervention dealing 3 damage to any targets and gaining 3 life as well. Then at 2 mana we've got most of our creatures, we've got the full 4 copies of Dreadhorde Arcanist, which is excellent in this deck, 2 mana for a 1-3 with Trample, and whenever the Dreadhorde Arcanist attacks, we can cast, target instant or sorcery card with converted mana cost less than or equal to Dreadhorde Arcanist's power from our graveyard without paying its mana cost, and if that card would be put into our graveyard this turn, exiled instead. So there's a lot of interesting things going on with the Arcanist, mostly it just lets us replay some of our 1 mana instants and sorceries from our graveyard without paying its mana cost, so we get a bit of card advantage that way. Uh, basically all the combo tricks in this deck cost 1 mana, so we can always cast them with Dreadhorde Arcanist. One exception is Integrity Intervention, which does have a converted mana cost of 5 as it's in the graveyard, so Arcanist would need to have 5 or more power before it can actually target Integrity Intervention. So that's a card we won't often be able to get back with Arcanist, but it's still good enough in the deck that we would want it. And then uh, Arcanist is also especially synergistic with some with Sprint, we can for 3 mana play the Arcanist, cast a sprint and then right away the arcanist can get something else back from the graveyard, maybe sprint another creature and give it plus 2 plus 1 as well. And then of course also great with reckless rage since at 3 toughness it survives the 2 damage from the rage. And as a side note, if you replay an instant or sorcery with the dreadhorde arcanist ability and you have a feather in play, then you can exile that card to feather's ability and get it back at the end of turn instead of exiling it for good to the dreadhorde arcanist ability, so that's something important to keep in mind in this deck. Then we also have the full 4 copies of Swiftblade Vindicator, 2 mana for a 1-1, Double Strike, Vigilance, Trample. So not the best target for Reckless Rage, but it is a great recipient of other pump spells, thanks to Double Strike doubling the effect of any pump spell. And then we also have the full 4 copies of 10th District Legionnaire, 2 mana for a 2-2 Haste, and whenever we cast a spell that targets the Legionnaire, put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on it and scry 1. So if we target it with Reckless Rage, it will get a plus 1 plus 1 counter before it's dealt 2 damage, so it survives our own Reckless Rage and gives us a ton of card selection with the scry 1, especially considering that a lot of the tricks already let us scry 1 or draw cards, so we can quickly cycle through our deck and find the missing pieces. And then at 3 mana, of course, we've got the full 4 copies of Feather, which is one of the most important cards in the deck. We also have 2 copies of Tajik, Legion's Edge, as a nice 3-2 with Mentor and Haste. Also says prevent all non-combat damage that would be dealt to other creatures you control, which means that if you use Reckless Rage on a creature that's not Tajik that you control, it will prevent that 2 damage, so we can even target a Swiftblade Vindicator without losing it, for example. 
and then Tajik can also gain first strike if we pay two mana. So just a nice hasty creature that uh, plays well with the Vindicator, since if we can mantra onto Vindicator a few times, it gets out of hand very quickly, and uh, just plays nicely in this red-white aggro deck. And then we also have two copies of a Legion War Boss, three mana for a 2-2 Mentor that keeps spawning 1-1 one, one red goblin creature tokens that have to attack, but we can of course mentor onto those tokens or back them up with our various pump spells, so War Boss can also get out of hand very quickly. Also plays well with Tajik since we can mentor onto the War Boss, and then the War Boss makes it easier to mentor onto the tokens, and so forth. Also plays well with Vindicator since we can still make it into a 2-2 double strike. So lots of mentor synergies going on and Mentor in general plays well with pump spells. In the gameplay footage you'll see we were playing the full 4 copies of Legion War Boss instead of Tajik, but a split between the two seems reasonable. And then the mana base is very straightforward, 7 planes, 7 mountains, 4 clifftop retreat and 4 sacred foundry. Alright, that's the deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. What about this hand? Huh, seems fine. Needs a few more combat tricks, hopefully we draw them. It is tempting to play Vindicator since we might be able to mentor onto it with Warboss later. Now we also have the option of Reckless Rage right away, since this gets a counter so it doesn't die to our own Reckless Rage. Alright. Up against the Merfolk. I doubt they block if we attack, and I'm fine with the trade. And next turn we can rebuy our Reckless Rage. Alright, so we've got a few options here. All of them are pretty good. Can just take out both creatures, play a Swift Blade, that's probably fine here. Pretty straightforward. Don't need more Reckless Rages. I'll put a stop on upkeep just in case we need to Reckless Rage before our draw step so we get to scry one from Legionnaire and maybe improve our draw step. Doesn't seem necessary. Yeah, this deck is kind of brutal when it goes off. Let's see, six, seven, eight, nine. Sadly, we can't cast uh, Reckless Rage if there's no target on the other side, so we couldn't just target the Legionnaire for the plus one counter. Seems fine. And that should be game. <laughs> Opponent proliferates on our Legionnaire. It's very kind of them. Should have mentored on our Vindicator, oh well. Yeah, repeatable Reckless Rages beats most creature decks. This hand's not amazing. But we can probably work with this. Vindicator plus pump spells can deal a lot of damage. Up against Fubblethop. We don't have double red, so we can go second Vindicator plus Sprinted. Thought Erasure. 
maybe taking the second creature. Alright, we get to Vindicator plus Sprint. Bottom the mountain. Put a stop on upkeep in case we need to scry before our draw step. Sahili. Mox Amber, nice. They changed the Mox Amber animation. Compass, make a token. Alright. So we want to wait to see how they block before casting the Sandwich Sprint. Alright, that was a good draw. Get to play Feather. Attack. We'll go face here. And see how they block. Let's just sprint. Yeah, I'll keep that one. A worst case is some sort of sweeper effect here, killing all our creatures. Antiquities finds a Mox Amber. But uh, they're pretty dead here to our creatures, and especially with Integrity Intervention on top. Thoughts on Sahili over Warboss in this deck? Um, the problem with Sahili is that it doesn't help in certain draws where you don't have good targets for your combo tricks to begin with. Whereas with Warboss at least it's a threat you can play, and then you can start targeting with pump spells. But maybe Sahili could be a good tool after sideboard against control decks, for example, where the war bosses may be a bit more vulnerable and Sahili is a stickier threat that can stick around and provide a lot of value over a longer game. But yeah, war boss requires less uh, setup to be good, I think, and plays well with the various creatures you can mentor onto at one power, and plays well with pump spells in general. How about Gird for Battle? Gird for battle could be good. Can pump up multiple creatures, get it back. It is of course a sorcery, so... It's a bit easier to play around to an extent. How good do I think this deck will actually be? It could become a role player for sure. Don't know if it'll be tier 1, probably not, but... Feather is definitely a powerful and pushed card. Alright, this hand relies pretty heavily on this Vindicator to stick around. Alright, maybe some sort of aristocrat style deck. So don't know if we want to play Vindicator. Yeah, probably not. Although it's not like uh, Sheltering Light protects our Vindicator. Hmm, so we're kind of in a tough spot. We could just pass a turn here. We could play Vindicator, then they get to play Creature, Activate Priest, get another token from the Initiate. Otherwise we gotta wait until we get to Intervention mana to kill the Priest. I think we say go for now. Celebrant's a good one. Alright, we'll start running these out there. Could some with sprints, but then they just activate the priest in response. They did not activate priest end of turn. Midnight Reaper. Yep. Alright, so we're probably not winning this game. How was Super Friends? The version we tried was pretty bad, like. We tried a four-color version with a bunch of the Oath cards, contorting the mana base just for a bit of 
upside with oaths doesn't seem worth it. Better off just sticking to a three color control deck with a few planeswalkers in them. Second priest, enforcer, and this is the type of matchup where we need a war boss to generate a few tokens to protect us from the priest. Can play arcanists, give it haste. If they block with the enforcer, we can give it indestructible, but then we don't get to play the vindicator. Or we can play Vindicator Arcanus, say go. Which one do we sacrifice? Not sure. I guess we just play both creatures and pass and then we'll keep the Arcanist and try and get ahead on cards. Well now we're just super dead. So we've got two Celebrant Triggers, Enforcer, Judith Pinging Vindicator, the Priest Trigger making us sack a creature. So if we make our Vindicator indestructible, we can still sack it and keep the Arcanist. Alright. And hand seems fine. We've got our turn two Legionnaire with a few pump spells. And then Vindicator plus Sprint is nice too. Alright, so now we don't get to sprint the Vindicator, otherwise we're tapped out and they can block Legionnaire. So you just have to attack, see what they do, they probably take two. And then we can Defiant Strike the Legionnaire and play Vindicator. Seems fine. Don't think we need more lands. Just one more pump spells. Could also sprint a war boss next turn, which is pretty nice, since it's can mentor onto even a 3 3. Kiora has a lot of counters for the Soul Diviner to draw cards with. Alright, that's nice. It's a neat combo. A Reckless Rage was a great draw. So, got a, a lot of options here. Definitely want to kill the Soul Diviner, which leaves us 3 mana. We can Vindicator plus Sprint it. Or we can War Boss, make a token. Alright, so let's uh, start here. See what's on top. Maybe that changes our play. Yep, that's what we're looking for. So now that we know that we're drawing Feather, we probably want to save the Sprint and instead play the War Boss. And I guess we'll kill the Planeswalker here. Better save than sorry. Alright. Alright. 
Warble seems fine. Yeah, it's possible we want a mix of Warboss and Tajik. Tajik and also Mantron to Warboss, so having a mix can be nice. So I think we just move to combat, we can sprint to Warboss, doesn't seem necessary. Moment of craving, so if we sprint to Warboss now, they need a second removal spell, they go up to four. Seems fine. Alright, that'll do it. Sweet. So the Boros Feather deck definitely has some potential. Going back to deck building for a second. So Defiant Strike seems like a must-have. Reckless Rage seems like a must-have as a great creature removal spell. Sandwich Sprint was pretty impressive. Uh, and then two of Sheltering Light, this could be something else, but seems like a nice addition. Gives you a bit of game against sweeper effects as well. And then Integrity Intervention, while it's a bit of a nombo with Arcanist, it is still a nice flexible pump spell that can also be used as a removal spell. So I kind of like it. The amount of pump spells in the deck seemed about right. Felt like we had a nice mix of creatures and pump spells for the most part. Arcanus seems great, Vindicator seems good, Legionnaire seems good. Feather is of course a build around. 22 lands seems good. And then Warboss. I mean Warboss played pretty well, didn't really have any complaints. But it's definitely possible that like a Tajik could be a small improvement, plays well with Reckless Rage, preventing damage dealt to other creatures. That's non-combat, so yeah, Tajik plus Reckless Rage is neat. So yeah, possible that we want like two Tajiks instead of two Warboss, something like this. Uh, could be that we want like one Aurelia as a curve topper. Plays well with uh, Swift Blade Vindicator. Could be fine, don't know if it's necessary, since the curve of the deck is relatively low. But uh, all cards worth experimenting with. But the archetype in general seems quite strong. So, definitely looking forward to playing more games with this style of deck. But for now, I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.